8, Lesson 7, Part 1. We're going to cut in Lesson 7 to two parts. It's a little bit lengthy, more because it goes through explaining the pattern of Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle gives us an idea of how to um, expand uh, big, bigger things than squared in terms of foiling. Like when I have x plus y squared, we can kind of do that x plus y cubed. Well, we can do that. It takes a little time. x plus y the fourths, we can do that. It takes a lot of time. Um, Pascal's triangle actually develops a pattern for us in which to, um, how to, what to expect in terms of coefficients. And so overall, it just saves us time. Okay, so we're just gonna go and talk about Pascal's triangle. And I, I do think this is interesting. I like the pattern aspect of it and the way it unwraps. So uh, let's go ahead. So first thing, uh, we're gonna be looking at x plus y as our basic example. We're showing x and y as with variables. Obviously, it could be x plus three. It could be two uh, x plus three y. All those things are fine. We're just staying with x plus y for now. So first things first, we know everything to zero power is simply one. So we're just gonna write one here x plus y to the 1 is just x plus y. Okay, You probably can do x plus y squared in your head. That's probably not a problem. x plus y squared is x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Okay, Then x plus y cubed is a little bit tricky. Uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can use the x plus y squared and hit it with another x plus y. So we can take the x plus y here, and you can just kind of visualize you're going to the uh, above line here. So if I hit the x to all three things, it's going to be x cubed plus 2x squared y plus xy squared. And I hit it with the y, it's going to be plus um, x squared y plus 2xy squared and plus y cubed. Okay, so that's the pattern we have there. And then we can combine for the... Um, the middle there, we have a 2x squared y, and we have an x squared y, and we have an xy squared and a 2xy squared. So those are both going to each be threes now. So if we go ahead and combine the like terms, we get x cubed plus 3x squared y uh, plus 3xy squared. Okay, and then lastly, the y cubed. So that's the x plus y cubed done out. And again, what we can do is we can go ahead and hit what we just did again with another x plus y. So hit x plus y to these four and go from there. If we do that, if I hit the x first, it's going to be x to the fourth. It's going to be 3x cubed y. It's going to be 3x squared y squared. And it's going to be x y cubed. Okay, and then I hit everything with the y now. It's going to be plus x cubed y plus 3x squared y squared plus 3xy cubed plus y to the fourth. Okay. And then we look for like terms. We have x squared y squared, x squared y squared. We have a x cubed y and x cubed y. We have an xy cubed and an xy cubed. Those three things can be combined. So after we combine those, it's going to be x to the fourth plus four x cubed y plus six x squared y squared plus four um, x y cubed and then plus y the fourth. Okay. And so that's just doing those out by hand first so we get the idea of why Pascal's trying to help us because obviously that takes a little bit of time. Okay, So as we go forward here, we look at complete the following to the answers below. So we just already did these, so we're just going to fill these out. This is to kind of help us lay out the pattern a little bit. But zero power is one. Uh, it's going to be x plus y. It's going to be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. It's going to be 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed plus y cubed. Oops, sorry, I did y cubed. Sorry. Okay, and then we have, uh, I'm just taking these from the top. So if you remember how I'm getting these, it's just what we just did. 4x cubed y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4xy cubed plus y the fourth. Okay. So what they're saying is now we're going to look at these above and answer these questions. So state the number of terms um, in the expansion of x plus y squared. 
So x plus y squared, when you expand that, you have three terms. x plus y cubed, one, two, three, four terms. Interesting. It looks like it's going to be one more than the exponent. Well, let's make sure with the fourth. The fourth, one, two, three, four, five terms. So then what do you think the 20th term is going to have? It's going to have 21 terms. State the sum of the exponent in each term. So this got confusing in one class, but what they mean is, is each term has, like, what is the um, sum of the exponents of each term? So for example, let's just use this line here for x plus y, or sorry, let's use x plus y squared. So x plus y squared, the first thing, x squared, that's a 2. y squared, that's a 2. Well, then this middle one is x1, y1. Remember, when you have two variables, you add the exponents for the degree. I guess it goes back to math 9. So that's going to be a 1 plus 1, which is a 2. So th what it is, is it's a 2 for every 1. Every term has a degree of 2. OK. x plus y cubed. OK, you'll probably get the idea here. Well, it's a cube, 3. 2 plus 1 for the second one, that's a 3. 1 plus 2 for the third one, that's a 3. And the last one is a y cubed, so it's 3. So we get the idea it's going to be 4. You can check the 4 there if you'd like. And then so the 20th will be 20. Each term will have a 20. OK, and now we're going to go ahead and start here with this triangular array, which is actually the pattern of Pascal's triangle that we're going to talk about how this pattern is developed and how it's pretty interesting. OK, so just in terms of the um, complete the following, which the coefficients. So what's the coefficient of each of the terms above? So we know that the coefficient of x plus y is 0 is simply a 1 because it's all that's there. x plus y is going to be a 1 and 1 because it's a 1x and a 1y. x plus y squared was a 1, a 2xy, and then a 1, so like 1x cubed or x squared and y squared. The cube went 1, 3, 3, 1, and the 4 went 1, uh, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay. Now we look at it in the triangular array, so we kind of look at it in terms of a triangle. So you kind of see the ones are on the outside. And we'll take a look at that a second, pause the video if you need to, and just see if you can figure out the pattern, like what, what's happening in terms of thing, and looking like think of along the lines of a pattern. Okay. All right, so. If you didn't pause the video, pause it now if you want to keep looking, but I'm going to tell you. So check it out. If you take the two spaces next to each other and go directly below the ones between them, that's what they are added. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. And that's how the triangle is built in terms of our understanding of the pattern. And that's going to work for all coefficients. Okay. So let's go and go further. They're going to kind of restate what I just stated, but have it written out here for you. So again, you can kind of see they have the coefficients written out all the way, which we did. We didn't do the fifth, but they add that for us. And you can see all the ones on the sides. Okay, and you can see the two, three, four, six, four, five, ten, ten, five. You can kind of see how the pattern is developing. So use the above expansion to complete the following. So there are how many terms? Okay. There are n plus 1 terms. So what that means is if n is our exponent, so the first one is 0, we had one term, n plus 1. If 1 is our exponent, that's 1, we have two terms, so n plus 1. We're adding 1 to the exponent for a number of terms. The sum of the exponents of x and y in each term is n. So what that's saying is the part we just proved. Every, if you're doing x plus y squared, every term is a square in terms of degree or a 2. The exponent of x decrease, so that just means if you go from left to right, it starts x cubed, x squared, x1, no x. And the y's increase. There's no y, y1, y2, y3, y4, if I'm looking at the, y, the x plus y4 line. The coefficient of the expansion form a symmetrical arrangement. So we have 1, 1, 5, 5, 10, 10. 1, 1, 4, 4, 6 dead center. Okay, so they're symmetrical. Okay. All right. Keep on going. All right. The coefficient in the above expansion can be put in a triangular array known as the Pascal's triangle named after Blaise Pascal. 
who has developed the application of the triangle in the 17th century. Use patterns to complete the next three rows of Pascal's triangle. So let's go ahead and just complete the pattern. So we're focusing on the pattern. So again, we kind of know it's going to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, okay, for our next three rows. 1 plus 5, that's going to be a 6. 1 plus 6, that's going to be a 7. 1 plus 7 is going to be an 8. We can do that on the other side, because remember, it's symmetrical. Okay, And then we have, um, we can go next one, 5 plus 10 is 15. 5 plus 10 is 15. 10 plus 10 is 20 for the dead center of that one. So there's the first row. 6 plus 15 is 21. 6 plus 15 is 21. 15 plus 20 is 35. 35. So that's an even row. So that means there's the exact same number on both sides. The one above it was an odd row. I mean odd in terms of terms. Okay. Um, 7 plus 21 is 28. 21 plus 35 is 56. 35 plus 35 is 70. 35 plus 21 is 56. And the 28 again. And so there's our three additional rows. Complete the following expansion. So now it's saying, well, with that knowledge, what is x plus y to the 6? Now the idea is not to FOIL this out. We're going to use Pascal's triangle. So one thing that people get confused on is the first row is a 0 for exponent. This is a 1, this is a 2, this is a 3, this is a 4, this is a 5, this is a 6. So this is the line we're looking at. This is the line we're looking at, okay? Because that's the exponent of 6. So technically it's the 7th row down, but in terms of exponents it's a 6. That's why it's n plus 1. So it's going to be, with using the pattern, it's going to be 6x to the 5th y. So see what I did here was, I took 1 off my x6 to make it x5, and I put that 1 on a y. So it's y1, 5 plus 1. And you just kind of interchangeably just keep doing this down the pattern. So like the next thing is going to be a 15. So you put 15, and now instead of an x5, it's an x4. That means I need a y2 to make 6. And then we go again, 20. It's going to be an x3 and a y3. And see what's interesting about this is, is that 20 is a dead center. That's why those are exactly matched in terms of exponents. Okay, so when you have an even, um, an even exponent, you're going to have a dead center, um, what do you call it, term. Okay, and then 15 again, and now it's going to be x2, y4. Then you're going to have the 6, x1, y5, and then you're going to have the y6 to finish. Okay, and then we'll do the 7 as well. So that'd just be the next row down, be this one here. So x7. Okay, and then it's going to be 7x6y1 plus 21x5y2 plus 35x4y3 plus 35. So this is where there's one not dead center because you can see it's an odd number of coefficients, so we can never match. So there won't be a center like 3, 3. So now it's going to switch from um, x4, y3 to x3, y4. Okay, and then we're going back now. 21, now it's an x2, y5. 7, x, y6. And lastly, the y7. Okay. So we got all that taken care of. And it says, which row of Pascal's triangle is equivalent to the coefficients of the term in the expansion of x plus y to the 6? So which row? So now we're counting the rows down. This is the n plus 1 idea. So if we want to do, now if we're counting rows, I know I start with 0 here, but technically this is row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. That's what's confusing about this a little bit. So um, when they're talking about what row of the Pascal's triangle is it, uh, exponent of 6 is row 7. Exponent of 7 is row 8. Exponent of 12 is row 13. Exponent of n is m plus 1. Okay? All right. Just got a little bit more for part one, and then we'll stop before the examples, and I'll make a second video for that just to make sure this isn't too long. Okay, so Pascal's triangle in terms of combinations. So it also happens in terms of combinations, and that's applicable to what we're doing in permutations combinations. So this Pascal's triangle is actually an array of combinations. The reasoning behind this will be developed in the next lesson. 
on the binomial theorem. So um, row one is one. Well, zero to zero, there's only one way to do that, so it's a one. Row two, and what you're, what you're seeing is, is that if you go through all of these and you match them, um, 3C1, just for example, 3C1 is equivalent to three. That's the same spot. So 3C1 is three, which makes sense. If you think about that, what that combination is saying, that combination is saying, saying you have three things, you're gonna choose one of them. How many ways can you do it? Well, you can choose them three different ways. That's it, because there's only three. Okay, and so anyway, these combinations are equivalent to the values in the Pascal's triangle. State the first three terms of the eighth row of Pascal's triangle in combination form. So now we're gonna use combination form. We're gonna apply this to the combinations that we are familiar with. So it says the first three terms of the row eight. So row eight would be the one after seven here. So we know it would be, see how it's six C zero? It'd be seven C zero. That's the first one. The second one would be seven C one, seven C two. Okay, which would be one, those values are one, seven, 21. Right, so remember the one here, six plus one, seven, 16 plus 15, 21. See the last three terms of the eighth row of Pascal's triangle numerical form so, and combination form. So I'm gonna do combination first, so remember it's mirrored. So it's gonna be over here, six, choose six. So it's gonna be seven, let's work our way out normal. So let's do it, so this was the first, second, third. Um, this is the last, 7C7, 7C6, 7C5. Okay, so 7C7 is going to be a 1, and then it's going to be a 7, and then it's going to be a 21. Now don't forget, when we talked about combinations, remember, look, 727 and 720, what's 0 plus 7? It's 7. Remember we talked about the mirrors of each other are equivalent values? So 720, there's one way to do that. 727, there's one way to do that. Now conversely, seven choose six mirrors seven choose one because six plus one is seven. Remember that we talked about in the combination um, lesson. And then seven C five and seven C two, five plus two is seven, so these are mirrors of each other, so those are both the value of 21. Okay, use Pascal's triangle to write the following as a single combination, four C two plus four C three. So what they're doing is they're playing with you in terms of four C two and four C three, they equal that right there right, by the Pascal's triangle, um, uh, Pascal's triangle pattern. So it would be 5C3. Six 6C0, six 6C1, six so that's gonna be these two add together. What do they give you? They give you this one, which is going to be 7C1. And so then we can make the, like we get the idea that if we do NCR plus NCR plus one, what do we get? We get N plus one because see it was six and a six and now it's a seven. It was a four and a four and now it's a five. So it would be an N plus one C. And then what is it? It is the R plus one. So is this number's matched? One, one, three, three. So just setting up in terms of uh, variables, almost like a definition. Okay, all right, so this is just the last piece here before we break the video up. Best gain, three sums equal to two to the n. Okay, so part one, complete the table for the sum of the numbers in each of the first six rows of Pascal's triangle. Okay, so complete the table of sums. All right, complete the following statement. The sum of the numbers in the n plus one nth, n plus one nth row of Pascal's triangle is two to the n. Okay, so they're asking us to do is essentially they're saying sum of the numbers in row one it's one. How would you write that as a power of two? Well, it's two to the power of zero, because two to the power of zero is one. And so then row number two, what's the sum of numbers out? That's one plus one. So we're talking about the Pascal's triangle, so look above there, that's what we're talking about. One plus one on row two is two, which is two to the one. This is what I think is really interesting. It really comes together in terms of how it's developed. The third row is one plus two plus one, which is four, okay, which is two squared. And then you can guess it, the next one is eight, which is two cubed. The next one is 16, two to the fourth, 32, two to the fifth, okay? So n will give you two to the n minus one, okay? If you do n plus one, will be two to the n. 
Okay, and that means is that um, it's one behind. So if you just do the power of n, well, you know that's going to give you one less row because we start with zero for an exponent. So that's going to give you n minus one. But if you do n plus one, then that's going to be the proper, it, it'll, it'll fall in line with what you've seen. Okay? So look at the row of five and pass this triangle in the combination form. The sum of the numbers in this row can be written as 4c0, 4c1, 4c2, 4c3, 4c4. But further part one, the expression has a power of two. So we know that that row, is a, like, so that's a fourth row, okay? That's a fourth row. So that means it's going to be two to the power of four, because this is two to the n, okay? Row number, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, because we start with, if you go to the top there, we do start with zero, two, zero. So I'll show you why. So zero, two, zero is row one. So four is one, two, three, four, it's the fifth one down. So we are doing the fifth. So then what we put here is, that means this would be two to the fifth. Oh, sorry, sorry, two to the fourth. What am I doing? I just, it's, the, it's the fifth row, which is two to the fourth. The fifth row, which is two to the fourth, apologize. Row seven, okay, is going to be two to the sixth. And which I want you to kind of pay attention to, which is really helpful here, and it'll help you if, if you're getting confused with what I said last time. Notice, look, it's four two something, it's two to the what? Fourth. It's six two something, that row should add up to two to the sixth. That's a real easy way to remember. Okay, so let's complete the following statement. N two zero for all these things. Well, N, remember I told you focus on this number there. It's going to be two to that value. Okay? All right. Quick little finish part three here, and then we'll pause the video. Okay. So consider the expansion x plus y to the n, where zero is between n and five. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at, we're going to fill the table again. So sum of the coefficients. So we're going to add the coefficients up. So the co some coefficient for the first one is simply one. So that is power of two is two to the zero. The coefficients of this again, and this is being repetitive, is two to the one. Okay. And so they do want, oh, I'm sorry, n is one. So they're not going to do, we're not going to do zero again. So they want n to be one. So if n is one, that means we're doing this line. So that's going to be two, two to the one. And then it's going to be two. to be four, two squared. How am I getting the four? One plus two plus one is four. Three, one, one plus three plus three plus one, you get the eight, so you get three cubed. Four, 16, two to the fourth, five, 32, two to the fifth. So we see that the pattern here, again, is two to the n. Sum of the coefficients in the expansion of a given binomial with an exponent of n is two to the n. All right, so it's pretty interesting. Okay, so we'll pause it here and we'll do a couple, well, let's actually, let's finish this last little definition and we'll start with examples in the next video. So three sums equal to two to the n. The following statements summarize the previous investigative work. The sum of the numbers of n plus one to the nth row of Pascal's triangles is two to the n. So when you're adding up whatever row you are, so whatever you're choosing, so five C zero, five C one, that means it's gonna be two to the fifth. And that's the best way for us to um, figure out what we're expecting in terms of a value there for the sum of the coefficients. Okay, so sum of the coefficients of expansion of x plus y to the n is 2 to the n.